It's a pleasure to have you right here at Unlocking Marito Bliss. And I'm always so excited to just always have you guys tuned in. We accept your reports. They're so wonderful. And we keep going on. This is the place where we believe in bliss in marriage, okay? Marriage is not for toiling, but for bliss. Tonight, uh, being the month for autism awareness, I want to bring something to you. Autism. That's what we want to talk about. Probably you've never heard of the word autism. And we want to let you know that actually, is it possible to have an autistic child and still maintain your marriage and still be able to succeed and enjoy your life? Is it possible? Can you love even in the midst of autism? Is autism a curse? I mean, is somebody having some ancestral spirits attacking them is autism something that happens to a woman and not a man quite a number of questions where many marriages have broken where many relationships have broken simply because a couple had an autistic child according to a study done by some organization over here autism uganda they believe that there are over 388 thousand autistic people in this nation 388,000 and what is happening to all of them where are they are these numbers proper where are they we need to find out are we hiding all these children under are we hiding them what do we do are they unacceptable are they supposed to be loved or rejected this particular show today is dedicated to these particular children and even to couples that are raising them. And we wanna see how we can help them, how they can come out and enjoy their marriages even when they have autistic children. And I'm gonna give it to you right now to hear your views. When you have an autistic child, does your marriage end? Simply because I'm a man, I don't give birth to autistic children. I'm a man. It has been saved by many of you, but I want to challenge you. An autistic child is a child, and that child is your child. I'll take a short break, and I'll be right back after watching your views. Moreto Bliss. It's so amazing. I've had your views, and literally many of you believe Oh no, if I have an autistic child, that's not my child. You go find his daddy. Honestly, the problem is about love. You don't love yourself. You hate who you are. You don't even know unconditional love. When you know unconditional love, you will know that I will love my child unconditionally. Because no child prepared to come out like that. No. And as a matter of fact, God is giving you such responsibility he trusts you that you can handle this and that's why sudden things happen so please tonight in this studio i have two guests that actually know more about autism and here in uganda we probably have been hiding our children and thinking they're bewitched and thinking they're forgotten and thinking they don't exist and locking them up in wardrobes and treating them like nothing because they have disorders, because they're disabled. They have disorders, different disorders. But this time we're talking about autism. And I know it can affect you too. And I want to take this moment and introduce to my extreme left, first and foremost, I have Susan Quizera. You're so welcome to the show. Thank you. Susan Quizera. And uh, you are the founder, CEO of New Life Foundation? Yes. New Life Foundation. Where is New Life Foundation found? It's in Munyonyo. What is it about? It's a, a, a program that we set up a foundation for our children with autism. We've been operating for the last two and a half years. For the last two and a half years? Yes. So you keep these children around with you? Yes, we do keep them around with us. And uh, some of them go home. Some of them stay at the premises. 
okay. and we have uh, teachers, we have therapists, okay. and uh, coaches and caretakers for them. So it's a formal school dedicated, or formal place dedicated to autistic children? Yes. Thank you so much. You're doing a great work because that is really helping us. And I'll get back to you. And to my immediate left, I have Banjirana. Miss Banjirana, I love that name, the way it sounds. Miss Banjirana Lewis. It's nice to be here, Pastor. Thank you for coming to this show, Unlocking My Real Bliss. Miss Banjirana Lewis, what does Banjirana mean? Um, I'm not so sure. You're not so sure? <laughs> it was the name I acquired from my father. Oh, okay. Yes, it's That's called Banjirana. That is girl, okay. Yes. Okay, we get that. Now, I have Louise over here. Miss Louise and then Miss Susie. You own a school or a foundation to help autistic children. Yes. First and foremost, before I get to you, Louise, what is, what is autism? It's uh, autism spectrum disorder, and it, it affects our children with their communication, uh, their social skills. Uh, mentally, the brain is affected. Their nervous system? The nervous system too, yes, but mostly the brain. The brain. Yes. And they're not able to develop well. They're not able to develop uh, well and uh, with their communication and their social skills. Some, okay. Most of them are shy. Most of them, they won't speak. And that's how we pretty much recognize them. That this child is autistic. Yes. At what age can you tell that this child is autistic? Uh, right now, we can even tell at the age of 18. I mean, 18 months. 18 months. Yes, but before it was like two, two years to three years. Mm -hmm. But also, they can be recognized at later, you know, age. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll get back to you. So, Miss Louise. I have a son, a 12 year old son with autism. You have a 12 year old son with autism? Yes. So, I've had autism in my life for the last 12 years. Wow. You've had autism in your life, in your family for the last 12 years. <coughs> yes. How many children do you have? I have two children. Okay. I have an older one who is 14 years and then the 12 year old who has autism. Who has autism? Yes. How did you get to know that my child is autistic? Do you do blood tests? Do you do, uh, how did you get to know this? No, we don't actually do blood tests. What I realized as a mother, of course, you start noticing and you compare with other children most times. Okay. So I found he wasn't meeting most of the milestones. He wasn't responding by 18 months. He wasn't trying to even speak. You call him and he doesn't respond to you. But then you notice it's not because he doesn't hear because when he hears like a song he likes, he will turn and respond to it and everything. But he was not responding normally. So I started asking around. I, um, Louis, yes. he was not responding normally. Yes. For the sake of our viewers, they won't even know what you mean by normal. By normal. For example, if you have a toddler and you tell them, get me my phone there, they will run to it and pick it and bring it to you. Mm. He wouldn't do that. You tell him that and he ignores you. You call his name, he doesn't respond to his name. That's the kind of thing, as in... And what did he you is, think at that point? At that point, of course, I got to talk to many people. I talked to my mom, and she would tell me, no, he's still young, he's a boy. Boys develop slow. slowly, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But then, with time, I talked to his pediatrician, the one I was seeing at that time. Mm. So the pediatrician told me it could be a hearing problem. It could be a condition called autism. Just, he gave me somebody to contact to tell me to give me what, better advice. What age was that boy right now? He was about three and a half. I felt I had waited <coughs> long enough because yeah. development has a time it has to come, even if it has really delayed. That's very true. Yes. So now so that's when he I couldn't respond, he couldn't run, he couldn't... No, he could run. He was physically very okay. Physically very okay. Very fine physically. Uh -huh. But mentally, you would see there was something missing. So would it be like, a, okay, something missing, like a disorder he does not understand? Does that mean that he does not understand or somebody would say he's uh, mentally disturbed in a manner like 
go into some psychiatric asylum, something like that? Okay, the developmental disorder that we're talking about is, um, my son, he was not able to, to do some things mm -hmm. that other children were doing. Okay. My main yardstick was looking at other children his age and yeah, maybe those true. that are a bit older than him. Yes. So I kept wondering and asking around. So I ended up going, or oh, at this point it's important to point out that over the years I have learned that not all children with autism are exactly the same. That's why we call it the autism spectrum disorder. They have, much as they have the same symptoms, they have... Um, Different responses. Different responses. No, and even different ways of manifesting their autism. Okay. So in this case, in my case, he was very calm. He was not aggressive. He wasn't fighting. He didn't look like a mental case. Okay. So um, I thought there was a problem. And since the pediatrician had, had mentioned maybe he autism. can't hear, mm -hmm. I started with that. He was actually diagnosed by a doctor here in Kampala yeah. that he cannot hear. He actually um, recommended a cochlear implant. No, you're kidding. Yes. No, which hold is it. You took your son to a professional. Yes, doctor. an ENT. Yes. ENT. Yes. And came out with a diagnosis. Yes. That your son cannot hear. Exactly. And he recommended a cochlear implant. A cochlear implant. Yes. Now, a cochlear implant is an operation where they implant something that enhances the hearing okay. at the back of the ear. Okay. So it was, we found out it was very expensive. We even started some kind of fundraising. And then I refused to believe that my son couldn't hear because as a mother, you notice so many things. Mm. For example, if a car hoots at the gate, he's going to run to the door. Yeah. That kind of thing. It's only that he wasn't responding to what you would tell him. The social part. Exactly. So that brings in the social <coughs> part. His social interaction is very, very limited. Very limited. Which is characteristic of most autistic people. Now, they, you mentioned autism and then all these, some of these symptoms that you were mentioning. Yes. Maybe some people think it maybe it's uh, witchcraft. Yes, they do. Unfortunately, most people especially um, in our rural areas, yeah. not even rural, even here in Kampala and yeah, in, in the, the cities. City. Yes. Most people believe their children, it's a generational curse, they've bewitched my child, that kind of thing. So How they do you end overcome up, such notions and such, you know? Beliefs? Lucky enough, I come from a background that doesn't believe much in that kind of thing. Okay. So it did not even cross my mind. Yeah. It didn't cross my mind. Oh, okay. But um, I got to hear it later. Yeah. People would tell me, but you know what? Don't you think your son is bewitched? Maybe your stepmother, maybe whoever. So I would be like, no. This one is something that we have to handle. And at that time, I had already heard of autism. Yes. And he had most of the symptoms, the symptoms of autism. Mm -hmm. And he was already dealing with, um, he, wa he was at a <coughs> school that was dealing with autism. Um, so they were handling him as that. So you had already taken him to school. Yes. Now let me take you back. Mm. At that point, now you discover that he's autistic at yes. three years, right? Yes, three and a half to four. Three and a half to four. Yes. You discover that he's autistic. Yes. And what happens? Before you answer that, I'll go back to Quizera. Now, at that point, are you the people that actually do the diagnosis? No. In your foundation? No, we don't do that, but we work with doctors who do that. Okay. Yes. Are there some special doctors that deal with autism or any general practitioner can be able to tell? No, there are some particular doctors who do that. And also um, some therapists can do that also. They can, you know, look at the child. They can diagnose that this is autism. This is... Um, like uh, psychiatrists psych can do that? Psychiatrists can do that. Uh -huh. But also um, therapists, other therapists, uh, occupational therapists, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, speech therapists can observe and be able to tell. They can observe and be able to tell. Yes. And you have some of those at your school. How do you admit them in? 
especially um, when somebody brings a child and says, uh, this child, I don't know, they told me might be autistic. Do you have some people that are able to do the diagnosis there in your foundation? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. And actually okay. we are working with uh, some other schools, normal schools, okay. uh, who have those children. The regular schools. Yes. I think we will call them the regular schools. Yes. And then because m most of these children are actually children. They're loved. They're accepted. Yes. Mm -hmm. So some of the things may not be what is regular or irregular in their behavior. All right. So, okay, go ahead. You work with regular schools. Regular schools. And uh, what they do, of course, they, as they teach, they note some delays or some improvement in those children. Okay. So they contact us mm -hmm. and we send their, our therapist to just test them and watch their movements, what they do, because they're trained to do that. Yes. So if it's beyond them, then we can recommend them to the doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then they are able to tell. To tell, you know, they're autistic or maybe delay in speech. It might not be autistic per se, but there are some children who have delay in speech. And what I mean by that is um, some children speak at all age, some don't. Okay. Um, I'm dealing with a parent who is saying, you know what, my son will speak because I spoke at age of five. So, but this what? is probably 35. The parent yes. started speaking at age five. Five, yeah. but this is 35 plus years ago. Things have changed. So we cannot take that as something we have to really believe. We have to go ahead and do what we have to do. And at this point. Yes, at this point. But, you know, like she said, some parents are in denial of this. And we don't want to push them. But we keep engaging them. Now, like you're saying, the parents are in denial. Yes. yes. What does that mean? It means that it's hard to believe or to take or to embrace that my son is different or my daughter is different. Okay. Now, I'll ask Louise. Louise, you say you have a son. Yes. A 12-year-old son. Yes. And then we have over here uh, Susie saying, you know what, we're first parents who are in denial. Yes. You're, you are a parent that is not in denial. Yes. Did it ever hit you at one point when you got to know my child was autistic? Yes. Uh, most parents start in denial. Ideally, in our ideal, ideal world, you have a child and you're thinking, my child is a normal child. Yes. And then someone tells you, they're not going to be able to speak, they're not going to be able to do this kind of thing, they can't communicate well, they can't look <coughs> you straight in the eye. That's another thing. They don't have eye contact. They don't do eye contact. No, most of them. Until after some kind of therapy has been done for a very long time for some. Okay. And for a short time for others, it's different. Okay. So you find your child, um, they tell you something like that, and then you start thinking, God, why me? How can I have a child like this? You know, there are viewers right now who are watching this particular uh, show, yes. Unlocking the Red Bliss, and they're thinking, that's me. Yes. That's Most me. parents at the beginning, me, I had a breakdown of like three months. I was crying every night. For your baby. Yes. I was saying, how can my baby be like this? And just a few months before, when I had just had him, when he was about six yeah. or seven months, yeah. I was thanking God for giving me beautiful children who are okay and everything. And then a few years down the road, I discover my son has this condition. And I'm saying, why me? Why should my child be like this? So at but six months, see, the child never had any... No, he was a normal growing baby. Like I said, physically, he's fine. And at that point, they don't interact so much socially, so you can't notice much. Yeah. And this condition is mainly social. Social. It's social interaction and communication. The people that are having children probably and probably you have the child yes. or you're carrying your baby yes. and then I want to reach out and carry the baby. Exactly. And the baby rejects me. No. You see Does most, it mean I am... No, no. You see, most babies do that. If it's a face they're not used to, yes. they will definitely reject you okay. until they get used to you. Oh, so yeah. that was a normal reaction for all babies.
okay. you wouldn't think this is something okay so the denial part that hit you yes. at that point and you cried for three months yes it wasn't exactly denial i think i accepted it at the beginning but my acceptance is what hit me i said why would i have a child like this mm -hmm. but after some time i sat and i decided you know what if i don't get out of this no one is going to help my child how did it happen with your the father of your child he was in denial he was in denial yes he, he refused to accept he refused to accept that at that point at that point yes he said that he's that's no his more. child no 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 he mm. didn't accept that that's what he had yes that's what he had yes mm -hmm. he he said my child is no more there's there's nothing wrong with him he's not autistic no mm -hmm. it, it it came later <coughs> for him to allow that that's what it is <coughs> for him to allow it. yes he did with time how long did it take him um i would say maybe another two to three years after i had accepted that it's autism we have to do something about yes. this because i remember going to mulago with him mm -hmm. that time they told us we have to look for a speech therapist they were very rare at that time they were only in mulago mm -hmm. and you would have an appointment like once in three weeks so i would carry my baby and go with him okay <laughs> and then you find the father wouldn't go with me he wouldn't allow to go with me he said there's nothing wrong with the child what are you fighting about now, you know, when you mention that, it brings in something that uh, a lot of our viewers need to know. Does this affect the way the two of you relate? It definitely affected ours. It affected you? Yes. And the way you relate? Yes, it Simply did. because the child now has become autistic, or you have an autistic child, mm -hmm. and as a man, I say, I don't give birth to such children. <laughs> no, he thought I was making too much out of nothing so much out of nothing yes these um dot com mothers you oh. think you know too much okay dot com that mothers. Kind of, actually i got that comment from my doctor as well my doctor <laughs> the one who told me the ent who told me my son was deaf he told me um you dot com mothers because he told me and i told him at one point i said no my son is not deaf he isn't i don't know what's wrong with him but he's not deaf yeah. he's like what's you mothers what is wrong with you 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 look at the internet too much, you're over-researching, and you think you're better than us. Oh my God. So that's when I left him. I didn't see him again after yeah, that. And yeah. uh, of course, we got rid of, of that diagnosis. I decided no. You being, having an autistic child, does it, have you experienced moments whereby other women are having autistic children and uh, their husbands have literally abandoned them? Are there such cases? I haven't come across any except from reading, as in I haven't seen anyone on a face-to-face -face okay. in person, but I've read. There was a story sometime last year <coughs> of a mother. She's in the village in Kamuli. Okay. So her husband, she had the baby, and then in the village it's, it's quite difficult. You get up, you're going to dig maybe, and then yeah. you have to tie your child to a tree maybe with a rope so that he doesn't wander about. Yeah. They wander, they run around, they don't know where they are going and they end up getting lost. So they tie them to a tree. So this lady was saying, she had two of them actually. So two she was- autistic children. Yes, unfortunately, autism could be genetic. genetic. We have many cases- Because I was gonna ask you exactly, what is the cause? Is it something that can be transmitted? Is it something that is infectious? No, it, it's not infectious, it can't be transmitted. Mm -hmm. No one knows as per now what causes autism. A lot of research has gone now, world over, since about the 1940s. No one knows yet the exact cause for autism, but there's evidence of genetics because some parents have more than one child. Okay. We've seen cases where there are three in a family. We have one wow. here in Uganda that has two babies. As and in, they're all autistic. Yes, five years and three years, both of them have autism. So there's evidence for, for genetics, but it's not yet been proved. So literally, you cannot point a finger to anything? No, yet. yes, not yet. I had somebody who was saying that uh, having a premature is one cause of autism. No. 
So those ones are also we, just... No, they're just guessing. Guessing. Mm. You okay. had your child very well. Yeah, mine was okay. He was fine. It was a normal birth, normal pregnancy, normal delivery. There was nothing wrong. He was fine until I started noticing things at about 18 to 20 months. He was fine. Yes. And then by 18, you noticed that he could not talk. Yes. Now, I'll speak to Susan. What do you have <coughs> to say? What are you doing to help out <coughs> these children? How do we get to new people? Actually, the awareness has to continue. In other words, in Africa, we don't know nothing about exactly. this. Exactly. So if we don't know nothing about this and it's still happening and it's going on, mm. then that means probably we are totally having numbers that we are hiding. Yes. True. 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 But then it's upon us parents who are affected by it to bring it out, to help other parents, because the people who have the stigma that they have to hide their children. And, th and that's very important that you mentioned. Yes. They have the stigma and they hide their children. They have to hide them. How do you handle it? You don't hide your child. Mm. You're on national television and saying, <laughs> I have an autistic child. Yeah. And then what is the father thinking? Is the father saying, oh, it's all right? Uh, he doesn't know I'm here. He will probably see me on TV. He's um, probably watching you right he, now. He's probably watching me. We don't live together. We've been separated for the last seven years. So he's not so much in his son's life. Not so much in his son's life. Yes. So would I say that that alone, because there are women watching you right now yes. who have autistic children and the man has decided to walk away. Mm. And probably the relationship now is not working anymore. Yes. Because look, the first African conference on autism has just taken place this month. This month. This month. The first African conference <clears throat> on autism. Honestly, it means that we are so way behind yes. that this needs to come to the forefront. And I really appreciate you coming up. And because of autism, several things are happening. Because in Africa, there are cases whereby such children, like you mentioned, that you tie her up, yeah. leave them on a tree, yes. or lock them up in yeah. a room, mm -hmm. or literally abandon them. The men are saying, that is not my child. Yes. In our family, we don't give back to such children. How can you help such a man? I'm going to get back to you when we, after this break. You're still Thank watching you. Unlocking My Riddle Bliss with Miss Iris Rod, and we're still talking about autism and marriage, especially bliss in marriage and how we can be able to bring this awareness so that we maintain the bliss in our marriages. We'll be right back. Moreto Bliss. Unlocking Moreto Bliss. Thank you so much for coming back. Yeah, we're still dealing right here at Unlocking Moreto Bliss with autism and bliss in marriage. Exactly. We want to see, because most of the people are going to be <laughs> thinking, okay, if I'm married and then probably I have an autistic child, that is going to destroy my bliss in marriage. And to many, that's been the case. To many, that has been the case. But we want to help you know that having a child that is autistic, I mean, you're never going to be able to explain much. But we'll pray to God and thank him and see how to go forward. Before we took the break, I was still listening to Louise. You were still talking about this particular situation when mm -hmm. I told you, okay, whereby you, I told you we're going for a break. Mm -hmm. You have forums, right? Yes, we do where you come together as parents as parents and and as you have mostly women yes, or mothers mm. what about the fathers is there any way we can talk to the fathers 
any way fathers can get to know that you know what mm. you've got to be part of this do you women share and say well the father is not in his life and all these or you all gather together and don't open up funny enough you find the fathers are members of these groups sure just very silent members there's a time when someone was joking and saying, you know what, when a woman tells a man what to do, he will always think she's just being petty. So we think the men, the fathers that are involved, should be the ones to involve the other fathers. The fathers that are involved yes. should be the one. Yes. But then you're they're, already saying that they hardly show up. They're, no, they're, those they're passive that, members. They are the few that are very <coughs> active. We have one active father on our, no, not one, about two or three active members who are fathers on our oh, group. Fathers, wow. So those ones are the ones who would be the ones to tell the other fathers. I think from their perspective, the other fathers would understand it better. Because such fathers actually need to be, need to come out, not many, because most of the guys are in the background thinking, I don't have that child, that's not my child. I'm not gonna <clears> carry <throat> that stigma. Exactly. And then I, I'm gonna just move on. Hey, I'm a dude, I'm all okay. <laughs> You know, everything is all right with me, you, you know, you know, and then we keep hiding the child. How can these fathers, is there a way, where do you guys meet? How often do you meet? Is there a way, because people out there watching, they would like to know, is there a way we can help these men? Our point of constant meeting is on social media, WhatsApp. We have a WhatsApp group. You have a WhatsApp group? Yes. So that's where we share. Okay. You share, you, you actually come up with a challenge. You're like, today my son did this. Has anyone experienced it? What have you done? I, I keep saying my son, according to statistics, it affects four boys and one. Eh? It's, a, it's a ratio of four to one. Wow. Yes, it's mainly male. We don't know why that is, but that's what <coughs> it is. That's what it is. Yes. Mainly men. Yes, it's mainly boys. <laughs> And men, because they grow up. By the way, autism doesn't go when you grow up. You become an adult with autism. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, Susan, you become an adult with autism. So, if you have a child who is autistic, they're going to be autistic as long as they live. Yes. Actually, I need to um, talk about the group of parents. Yes. Um, I'm on those forums sometimes, okay. and I watch, and I think I'm one of the forum she's on yes. and um, I've been reading and watching what they contribute but the bottom line they lack structure yes. they lack a system so what she says that they come and you know oh my son my daughter did this because they lack a, a structure they lack a system where that is what you're supposed to bring yeah yes. but not not me alone actually of course, but you're, it's a good start. It's a good start. And there are so many other organizations who are like me. It's not me alone. Really? Yes. In Uganda. We have a couple of them, but we all lack structure, including me. And that's why I'm here to actually speak up to the government. I'll take you back to where we were last weekend in Nairobi. Okay. We were over 20 countries, African countries, and the countries that are on top or doing much better than we Ugandans or, mm. you know, like Uganda. In because the this autistic way, um, area, yes, in the autism in area. autism area. the autism area is because the government are not involved. And this is Uganda. Uganda, the government is not involved. Yeah. And we call upon them. Okay. We have gotten to a level of where the government has to step in minister of education yes. and minister of health the government the ministry yes. of education yes. and the ministry, and ministry of, of health. health they have to step in. very important we can it's do a national much. problem it is it a national, is national and it's going faster than we can even imagine according to statistics we are looking at over <clears throat> three hundred thousand exactly people with autism, with autism. autism. Yes. Three hundred eighty-eight thousand. Yes. The last time I checked with autism. And most of us Ugandans don't even know what that is. No. We don't yeah. even understand. If you went to the street and shouted, who knows what autism is? You're not going to get someone coming up and telling you. And I have 12 children at my center. Okay. But one is the one who is married. Others are single mothers. 
all of them are single mothers. At your center? Yes. You parents. have 12 children. Yes. The parents yes. of those 12, all of them are single mothers but one. One is What married. happened to these other parents? Like she, you, you shared, the men walked out. The First moment all, they discovered that yes. my child is autistic, they walked out. They choose to go because they can't handle. They mm. feel it's the woman to handle this. They feel they're not supposed to do it. They, I mean, every blame is on the woman. Like that's your child. That's your mm. child. In our family, we don't get kids like that. Or probably <laughs> you, are, you have a curse. And that's what they tell the yes. mothers. Mm. Yes. May God bless the mother. And uh, the responsibility is always put on the mother. Yes. When your child is considered not normal, yes. it's your problem. When your child is normal, is passing well in class, is it's doing that's well, my kid. that's my child. Like a, a, a proverb in Luganda, Omwano mubi avumaganya nina. Omwano mgezigezi asanyi sachitawe. So. Now, you know, when you come up with that and you're thinking, I love the way you've presented it. When the child is doing so good, <laughs> you. it's me, the male. Yes, That's the man. my boy. That's my daughter. Yeah, and when they have any defect, mm. that's your girl. What's wrong with you? Your genes or something or whatever? You messed up my girl? You're mentally... You're <laughs> mental. Do you have some people with mental disorders in, in your, your family? family? And this is killing marriages. It does. This is destroying relationships. Yes. Yes. But I, I would ask you, Susan, why do you think men act in that manner? I, I have three boys. Okay. And uh, two are twins. Okay. And so you're in Nalongo? Yes, I'm in Nalongo. Okay. But, you know, even the normal children, mothers tend to step up. You know, much I, more. Much more than the men. You know, I, I, I would proudly say this because I've seen it in my own life. Okay. So, but what we have, what I have done, I've yeah. kept on talking to my husband. Yes. You gotta get involved. Yes. These are three boys who are growing up, who need a father figure, yeah. who need to exercise, do different sports. You need yes. to be there. Yes. You need to be there when they're doing their homework. Yes. You need to take them to the doctor. So imagine if a, a, an autistic child, definitely a man is going to walk away. Because... If he couldn't handle it when the child was normal, yes. then how is he going to handle it when a child calls for more responsibility? Exactly. How are you going to handle it when a child calls for more responsibility? I think to us men, we need to rise up and wake up to this. And actually, it's all about love. This is what I believe, and this is the fact. When I love myself, I'm going to love you. Yeah. You get me? When I feel good about myself, I'm going to treat you good. Now, irrespective of whatever happens, when I love my son and my child, if I love my wife, I will love the children she brings. That is how it works. But because we fail at loving our spouses, that's why we fail at even being able to take care of the children they bring. She is not to blame. She is not bewitched. Dude, you're just living in denial. That was mentioned. You're living in denial. Rise up and accept and be a man. Because all you can do is lay down your life for this particular person and say, that's mine. I'm going to take care of them. God, thank you for whatever has happened. Lead me, guide me, give me the strength. On your own, you can't. Now, having addressed the guys <coughs> and letting them get to know this, how do you feel as a mother? What goes on? Because you're representing many mothers with autistic children. Yes. What goes on in you? Uh, do you really accept what, or other women accept what the guys say? There's a problem with you. Mm. That is your child. Do you really get to a point of saying, I guess so? No, of course not. Although, I'm thinking some people of, um, I wouldn't say weaker character, but um, less exposed. Okay. You, sometimes you're battling with knowing what it is that your child has. 
Yeah. So that kind of thing affects you so much emotionally. So yeah. in the end, you might even start blaming yourself. You say maybe I'm the reason my child is like this. Exactly. And another thing, mm -hmm. in marriage, mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of um, you need to put in a lot in a marriage for it to work. Exactly. But you find when you have a child that is of special needs, yes. you put so much into your child. Okay. A That's, lot of that it. That is one other exactly. danger that hinders the bliss in marriage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you find you are putting so much into child. your child like a mother will not leave her child yes. it, it's just a natural thing most times no. yes so you find you're putting so much into your child that you forget your partner that could be a reason then, why bliss really disappears in exactly. these marriages and then also you find the man is blaming you for not taking care of him for minding about the children so much the child so much and that kind than of thing caring for him exactly and then you wonder is he your child or is he your husband now that's a very good question he should take care of you and your child that's a very good your question. child the two of you is the he... child is for both of us so you're wondering is this my baby or my husband exactly because the husband comes home he wants to be taken care of when you get home nobody takes care of you exactly and you're looking for your baby and you're wondering. And you're looking for your baby. And then now, now we're having a challenge. And here is over another here. big baby. And here's another big baby. <laughs> Guys, let, let us rise up. I mean, let's come out to the table, honestly. Okay? Here you have a child with special needs, but you demand, you also come in. Uh, you also demand to be attended to. Let me tell you this when you have a child with special needs, your responsibility has grown yes. higher. It has gone higher. And that means that you have your wife and you're working together as a team. Yes. You get it? That means you can even spend a month without even making love. Yes. Because all it's of you possible. love each other, but you're pulling efforts together, together. to raise your child. Yes. And together. it becomes so heavy when you just think, oh, he's, the woman will take care. The woman will take care. And hey, when I address them and I'm telling them, please, let's pull together and work as a team because you are a team. Right. Work as a team. Don't <clears throat> abandon your wife. Don't abandon your child. Work as a team. The moment you come out together as a team, you're going to begin actually loving each other like it has never been before. Mm -hmm. This child will not stop the love between the two of you. Mm -hmm. I believe the reason many times the men walk away is because they had responsibility and they I will not <clears throat> lay down their lives or endure the pains of helping you and working together, together with you. That's yes. true. And, and it also comes to you. Uh huh. I was thinking when you have a problem and you go through it together, it even brings you closer. Exactly. And that is what most guys don't understand. When you face a challenge, the problem is most of the guys, I'll speak what an average man thinks. I'm facing a problem. I've been kicked off the job and no time to talk. <laughs> this is me now. I want to process it. You know, you come up with all these terms that don't make sense. <laughs> I want to process what it means to lose a job. And at that point, you have no time to talk to your wife. You have no time. She's just thinking, what in the world is going on? Okay, whatever happens, Lord bless this almighty king because he's processing losing a job. Hey, dude, you're not the first person who's lost a job and you're not going to be the last. You got to love your wife you and up. tell her, hey, look over here. I still love you. This is what happened. And you will come together. Your bond will be stronger than it was before. Susan, do you believe that? You know, I'll add on something. Yeah. Um, having three children who are okay, yeah. um, I would say it's the, uh, it's the same. But we have responsibilities, full responsibilities. Like where I live, a mother is everything. I'm a wife, I'm a house cleaner, I'm a cook, I'm a- You offer sex. Yes. And I go to work. I come back, probably I have a ministry. Okay. All of those things. So I come back home. 
And the man is also And the wife. man is like, oh, where is food? Where is their kids? What? You understand? So it's, it's either way. But why, what I'm, I want to bring out is when you have love, the autistic child won't do anything. Actually, it's another stage in life mm. that you have to sit together and say, okay, now what? Let's do this. L let's do this let's, together. Yes, let's yes. do this together. Yes. Okay, let's see. Let's go to the doctor. Let, let's find out. I deal with young adults. Young okay. adults are 18 and above. Yes. These are kids who have finished high school. Yes. These are kids who are non-verbal. Some are non-verbal, some are verbal. Yeah. Some have behaviors, yes. really terrible behaviors, whereby they can even hit you in the middle of the road. Those autistic children. Yes, yes. those autistic. with behavior now. They can be violent. Yes, yes, very. The reason they get violent, let me just cut mm -hmm. in. Um, <clears throat> sometimes they want to communicate and, they, and they cannot. So when they're not understood, they try to bring it out. Like Physical. to be understood. Then another thing, the thing we don't, most people don't know, the least known trait about autism is yeah. sensory issues. Their senses work a bit uh, more than ours. Uh, like if I hear something like this, you will hear the noise like twice as much. Really? So you find like yes. my son, if I'm walking with him and he's in a place that is noisy, you find his hands are on his ears. He wants to see. reduce the noise. They have a sensory thing. They will taste something that you might not taste. He will gag at food oh. that you find normal. Their True. taste, their their sight, they, like their senses are over, overly active, over more than, active ours. than us. Than ours. Yes. yes. Wow. So that also causes that acting out. Yeah. The and violence. Adding, yeah. Yes. And adding on her, my one on one I work with, mm. I have to really be careful when I'm talking, like she said. She, she's, she won't talk. She'll just put his fingers in there, meaning you're too loud. Mm. Even if I'm oh, slow. Yeah. Yes. So it doesn't mean like, I don't care what you're talking about. No, no, no. Loud. It's the sensory issue. It's and sensory Pastor, issue. this is what we need to bring to our people here. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to know. Yeah, education. Education is very important. Like she said, the doctor said, you know, the dot com mothers mm. because they want to know they're reading to know yeah. people here don't want to read they don't want to even ask we think it's witchcraft it's yeah. witchcraft but read about it what is autism it's okay a child to be with autism but mm. what are we doing with that child they're very smart people yes they are very sure. smart people oh yes very artistic the thing with them when they get the one thing that they are good at they are overly good. So you want to tell us that they are talented? Very yes. much so. They are very talented. We have one, a Ugandan. He's called um, Julius Caesar Kajura. Uh -huh. He owns a band. He owns a band? Yes, he plays on the band. But if you tell Julius, um, what is two plus two? He'll say, just hold on, I have to count it on my hands. One, two, three. And then he'll tell, it's four. Really? So they are overly developed in one area and then oh. not so good. So when they get the one thing they are good at, they are really they good at it. Yes. They excel. And mm. that's one of the things wow. New Life Foundation is trying, is to, trying do. to do. Let's focus on each individual talent, skill, and okay. develop it. And develop yeah, it. because we cannot put them in normal do, schools. I'll ask you, do they write? <coughs> Some do write. Yeah, they can teach them. Yeah, but if you I, teach them. Yeah. And most of these autistic children out there in the nation, even as they're watching, our parents are watching, don't even know. I mean, the parents don't even know that such schools like yours exist. Yeah. Because there's not been an awareness. And you people have made a plea to the government and they're watching the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Health, and? Pretty much. Just those two. Those, those two, two are yes. Ministry of Education and Ministry of Health, mm. so that these children can be hard. Can be hard. Yes. Their voices they can need, be hard. Yeah, they need a policy. And that even parents can really be held accountable. Accountable, yes. Concerning these children, yes. not locking them up exactly. in wardrobes, locking them up and tying, tying them, them up like dogs. Like dogs, because this becomes child abuse. Yes. Yes. I believe that they are watching and really they are 
going to be able to make contact to make sure that this cries out. Our members of parliament and yes. all this, all this has to come out and it will cause a change. Definitely. And another thing we would probably want from government. Yeah. Um, you see, like you've said, we need to identify the talents that our children have. Yes. So we need that kind of vocational training for special needs that is all encompassing, where you can be exposed to everything until yes. you find out the exact thing that is good for your training child. Exactly. For children with special needs. Yes. Exactly. Because they won't go to the regular vocational schools. Not really. They need special teachers. They need special, because you might find if he goes to a regular vocational school, he's not good at what they're teaching. Yeah. So we need an all-encompassing vocational school with special teachers with who special understand teachers how to who deal with them. who understand how to handle autistic children. Yes. Because not every teacher <clears throat> will deal with autistic children. Exactly. Although every teacher can be taught. That, that's a good one. To Absolutely. deal with that's a special good one. children. Every teacher can be taught to deal with special yes. children. Yes. And I can also be taught yes. to deal with a special child. Yes. Actually, the parents are the easiest people to teach to deal with their special children. Oh, okay. So we also need those schools to teach those people. And I think probably you people need to get off the social media. Social media is very wonderful. You're able to contact several people through all these, you know, electrons and all that kind of stuff, but it's not so real. Yes. We need to get off the social media and, be and get real, hands on. Yes. Get into the faces yes. of these parents. Yes. And then get to the faces of these children and deal with this because I would like to appreciate your people coming out in the open because when you people promote it and you come out as parents, hold, what about a dinner? All parents come together, get to know each other, right. interact, begin talking, begin yeah. sharing. There are some parents that need encouragement, single mothers, whose husbands have walked away. Social media is not going to be enough. You're going to have to call them in together and let them pay something small for their meals and then begin sharing. I'm telling you this is going to go higher the government will get to hear your voice and i believe they, they have started yes and i know that they are they going have. to really do so much yes they have. i know that they're going to help so much yes. yes and it's gonna go bigger than what you even have known so that these children will stop being left behind number one but above all these children the wives equally would enjoy their marriages yes yes how can people get in touch with you, people that have autistic children? Um, we have a Look website. In the camera. We have a website, New Life Foundation, uh, www.newlifefoundation.ngo.ug, and we are located in Munyenyo. And um, we, are, we had a autism awareness walk. It was beautiful uh, on Sunday. Do you have any numbers they can contact you on? Yes, um, not off my head, okay. uh, but the website has the number. The website has the yeah, number. Yeah, www.newlifefoundation.ngo.ug. Uh, Thank it you It has so the much. number, emails, and all the contacts. That is so beautiful. Really, we need help in this area. Yes, we do. And then I come to Louise. Yes. I want you to say something to parents out there that have autistic children and encourage them, let them know you don't run away from your child. That and I to mean. your group, that they know. <laughs> you need to come in church and leave off social media. Now, parents, my fellow parents, with yes. children with autism, mm -hmm. what I want to tell you is, um, it is hard when you've heard of it at the beginning, but I can promise you it gets better. And how it gets better is attaining knowledge. If you know what to do, if you know where to go, you might not have the resources to reach there, but contacts, knowledge, it goes a long way. I started off as somebody who was sad about my condition. Now I'm happy about it. Okay. I know I can help people. So you're not like spending people. every night crying all the no. time. No. <laughs> I can help people. I can help people to know what it is, and that's what I'm trying to do. 
this month I've been mad about autism. Wow. Everyone can testify to that. Wow. And I think going forward, we need to do that. Because okay. people get up when they hear. They will ask, even if they hear the word and they don't know it, they'll ask, what is autism? And you start from there. That's how I started. Exactly. That's how I started. Yes. Thank you so much. It's always been a pleasure, and I enjoyed having you here. And uh, I would like to speak to the guys watching. Please, when you face a challenge, come towards your wife. Hold it together. Don't run away. Maintain bliss in your marriage. Don't let, don't abandon your child because they have special needs. Learn how to be there. And it begins with loving their mother. If you will love their mother, you can love that baby. Thank you for tuning in to Unlocking Marelo Bliss.